Let's talk singing. So, uh, hi, Whitney. Hello, Connor. Thank you so much for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, so, as we were just talking a small bit there, uh, you are in San Francisco, right? That's correct. Yeah, I personally live a little bit north of the city because mm. I've got a little couple little kids. Um, but I'm a San Francisco Bay Area girl, and we've mm. um, got a studio here that we've been uh, building for for a, a long while now. And I love Northern California and San Francisco. I haven't been there, but I've only I've only heard amazing things about it. I know a couple of you my gotta come visit. Come. Yeah, I definitely will. Yeah, for sure. So maybe you want to tell us a small bit about then that. I mean, the Songbird Studios, um, this is your kind of was and is your baby, your other baby, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Songbird is 100% my first baby. Um, <laughs> we So Songbird Studios was born out of, I was teaching voice myself. I was also a singer-songwriter, kind of doing my thing. And I started getting into the world of teaching and um, realized very quickly how much I enjoyed connecting with people and seeing them grow um, as singers. You know, personally, I actually didn't have wonderful experiences growing up with voice teachers and um, no bad words about anybody specifically, just more that, um, I didn't quite, I felt like it was sort of trying to fit like a round peg in a square hole or vice versa. Right. I just mm. didn't get a lot of, um, you know, I was sort of like getting a lot of instruction in maybe one genre that I wasn't interested in. And I couldn't get, find teachers that really knew what they were talking about with the songs I wanted to sing. And so it's kind of funny that I'm a voice teacher at all now, because if you had told my 13 year old self, I would never have believed you. Even my 18 year old self, I would have never believed you. But I, um, when I started veering into that world, I, I fell in love with it very quickly. It's one of those moments where you just think, oh my gosh, I'm meant to do this. Like you don't even realize it. And you think your whole life, I thought I'm going to be a performer, you know, and I had done some touring and stuff like that. And it was wonderful, but it was the moment I actually had like my first breakthrough with a student and saw them, um, really just like have this sheer joy and like love for their voice. That for me was, I was done. I was done. <laughs> this is what I'm meant to do. And so I started teaching, you know, uh, kids and then I started expanding to adults and beginners. And, um, we did, I remember back, gosh, it's been a while now, but, um, I had, I decided to organize a little, um, concert for my, my, you know, handful of students that I was working with. And, um, I was working primarily with contemporary singers and, um, I brought in like a live band, you know, I brought in some guys I play with all the time that I love. So we had a drummer, a bass player, a guitar, a piano, and we, you know, set this up, um, for them to have the experience of a real band backing them up, which was just so amazing. And, um, in the warm up process, like we were in the green room warming up and then each singer would hear each other perform. And I saw them start interacting and saying, you did so great. Oh, I love the way you sang that. And we should totally, and then singing harmonies with each other. And I thought this, this community thing is where it's at. And yeah. I want to do more of this. I want to bring people together more. I want to see more singers support one another. And, you know, then some of them started going off on their own and writing songs together. I was like, this is amazing. And, um, you know, I realized too, that I could only teach so many people myself. Right. So mm. I started building my schedule, but I, I could, you know, had, I don't know, 25, 30 students on my own. And I realized, well, there's a ceiling there. I can't, you know, there's only this small group of people I can work with. And, um, and so I, I decided to sort of expand and bring on other teachers um, and that, that sort of felt the same way. I wanted to make sure that any teacher I brought on, A, knew what they were doing, and also B, had the same philosophy I did around supporting singers and um, how to, you know, sort of help people develop their voice. Um, and so that was in... I think 2013, um, and uh, very quickly after starting to bring on uh, my first teacher, I realized I can't call this Whitney Nicole vocal coaching anymore. <laughs> it's not about me at all. It's about the community. It's about what we're doing. And so, um, you know, my husband got involved, now husband, then boyfriend, got involved, and he sort of helped me to um, make sort of a business plan and decide how we'd bring people on and... Um, 
Yeah. And the rest is history. We stumbled into our first studio and, you know, it's just been a really, it's one of the most formative and amazing experiences of my life. I'm so proud to be a part of my studio and I love them so much. And my, it's like my team is my family. Mm -hmm. It's so nice when you talk about that experience of in the green room with your students and kind of seeing that moment of when singers interact and support each other and you thinking, ah, okay working with those kind of people and helping them to to grow and and being being a catalyst or being someone that can allow that for them i think that's really beautiful i think that's that's uh that's a lovely story actually <laughs> oh thank you i it's really the magic you know it's not about singing isn't about any one person you know and the conne- mm-hmm. it's about the connection that we have and the bonds that we form and the way that we communicate as humans and um yeah and so it's yeah. i feel very very grateful every day that i get to be surrounded by people who feel the same way and also just to be energized mm-hmm. um in that way and sort of you know inspired it's it's really special mm-hmm. and so Two questions. Uh, one question is, how did you land on the name uh, Songbird Studios or Songbird? <laughs> Gosh, I mean, <laughs> so it's kind of funny because my uh, my husband and I, we kind of have this, we have this love for birds. We, I mean, we love all animals mm. and all things, but we sort of, um, since we started like since we even met, we would, our, our nickname, I remember very, very early in our relationship, he sent me this picture of like two loons and how they mate for life. And I just thought it was so romantic. <laughs> this is so cheesy and stupid. So but, <laughs> um, and so we always had this bird thing. And so we would chirp, we still do to this day, chirp at each other, you know, we, <laughs> our nicknames for each other are chirp, you know, it's totally ridiculous. And so, you know, we had had a bird in our, my Whitney Nicole vocal coaching, or there was sort of like some, you know, musical bird element in my first, you know, iteration of my, when it was just me. Mm. And, um, you know, at, I have to credit my husband. It was his, he, he was the one who said, you know, what about Songbird? And I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. You know, that's perfect for what we're trying to do. And so, yeah, it was, I got to give credit to my husband, but to this day, we're total nerds. We even call our kids baby birds. It's just ridiculous. (laughs) That's so sweet. It's like a whole (laughs) story in itself. That's gorgeous. That's beautiful. Also, is your husband a fan of, of Fleetwood Mac? (laughs) <laughs> yes yes i mean we yeah. who isn't <laughs> yeah, well, that's true exactly yeah yeah and my husband's also just he's like a lover of music well he would never yeah. get on here and sing but he sings to our kids and he sings all the time but he really is more of a guitar player and lover of music but it's funny because people always ask does he give lessons too and i'm like no he's an artist in many other ways oh, that's <laughs> nice Oh, okay so okay so that was the bird question now i've forgotten my second no have i <laughs> Wait a second. What was I going to say? Oh, yeah. It'll come. Um, so, yeah, so I have found it. So um, you were saying trying to find people, uh, other teachers that had the same philosophy or the same kind of, um, yeah, philosophy as you do. And what what would you say that is then? What was the, the thing that you said, oh, okay, that's a teacher that I'd like to work with? Um, a humble willingness to and constant thirst for learning. Mm. Um, that would be one very, very important component. Another very, very important component is just truly understanding the same reason that I teach, which is to help people love their voice. Like that is Mm. the most important thing. It's not a competition. It's not about, you know, finding the next American Idol. It's not about, um, I can sing better than you, or I can sing higher than you. Um, it's about, you know, each of our own, like, each of us learning to embrace who we are authentically and have the freedom and then also, you know, navigate our instrument enough to have the choice to sing and express how we want to authentically. Mm -hmm. So authenticity, but then also that desire to constantly learn. We, um, you know, I've, I've, it's, we've been in business for a while now and, you know, uh, it's, it's really interesting how the right people stay around, you know, you gravitate to the people that, you know, work and that's what we've tried really hard to do is cultivate a specific culture and, um, vibe at the studio that draws in those kinds of people. And, you know, we have a wide variety of backgrounds in terms of teachers. Some of them have classical degrees, opera degrees. Some of them have no degree and just gigged for 20 years. I mean, um, just, 
just wide variety of different backgrounds. But because we all have, you know, respect for each person's individual and authentic voice and everybody's um, own journey, um, we can come together and share our knowledge with one another and really, um, you know, honor what each of us brings to the table. And then there we become stronger together. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's interesting because you talked about this thing of um, you've mentioned a couple of times this community aspect of it um, and and how singing is not just a, a, a one person thing. It's a it's a community. And I think interesting enough in this time of covid, I kind of feel that there's there's kind of been a, a surge in in singers working with other singers or having the chance to do a collaborative project that they might never have had the chance to do. Um, not being in the same country and now everything is online and you can do these great songs together, videos together, together. And I think it's, it really shows that there's always that inside singers, whether they're out on their own or not, there's always a, um, yeah, a, a need or a lust for, yeah, a desire for, for working with other singers. Absolutely. And it's really, it's interesting too, because I mean, there's so many different ways. It doesn't just mean singing in a choir, although that is one of many wonderful ways of connecting with other singers, but it's also, like you said, collaborating, writing, you know, connecting, talking like we're doing, you know, it's, it's just, and you would think with COVID that it would actually take, you know, and in some ways physically has separated us in, you know, in certain ways and um, certain dimensions, but in many others, it has broken down barriers. And, um, you know, and with our studio specifically, you know, we've gone, obviously, as everybody else has, we've gone virtual, you know, Mm. it's not safe at the moment. Um, And so that's what we're doing, um, especially in our area. Um, But, you know, early on, too, you know, my teachers and I, we would, you know, we were connecting for our regular meetings online and Mm. talking about, oh gosh, how do we adapt? How do we adjust this? What do we do? You know, how can we bring more value to our students? How can we make sure that these online lessons are, you know, equal in value and, you know, still really wonderful and amazing for our students? Because they're not going to be the same, but we want to make sure they bring tons of value. And, um, you know, and one thing that we try to focus on was how is this going to, um, how can we look at this in a way that this is going to create uh, more opportunity and more creativity for us, both as teachers. What are ways that we can learn? Um, you know, this is going to challenge us. This is a new way of teaching. Um, we have to look at things differently. I can't be in the room and adjust you physically. I can't see maybe your whole entire body in the same way virtually. What are the benefits? What are the ways that I can creatively adapt mm-hmm. that are going to challenge me to become a better teacher, but then also to help our students? And the one of the biggest th- takeaways was also in those first few months where it was, you know, so much uncertainty and so much anxiety, and there still is a lot of that, but especially in March, April, May, um, you know, so many students reached out and my, my team even reached out to me and I felt like very much the same of just so thankful to have those connections, so thankful to have my teaching day, to show up and see eight people that I really loved and cared about and, you know, to be able to message my teachers and to be able to sing with them and see them online even. So in many ways it re-energizes or, or just like, um, reaffirms those connections that we have, even though we can't be together physically. Yeah, because I guess all of those connections just get stronger and stronger through through um, through hard times. I guess, and this is absolutely just a hard time. yeah through adversity. Through yeah. adversity, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. That's really cool. And so, Whitney, um, all of your teachers, then, um, are you okay? So let's go to this. Let's get to the point uh, that I want to talk about big time. Is this little, <laughs> this little wondrous package of joy? <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> this thing that when I opened it first and I I, I did some exercises with uh, floored me and the amount of resistance was in one because I've been using paper straws for a yes. long time mm-hmm. and uh, the difference was um, yeah it was something I wasn't prepared for <laughs> <laughs> so come here tell me Whitney this thing called the singing straw yes. Tell me all about it. Tell me how you, uh, tell me what it, what it is maybe firstly. 
Absolutely. Well, this is my passion project right now, and I'm so excited to talk about it and to share it with more people because straw phonation has truly um, transformed my voice and myself as a singer, um, and then so many people I know. Mm -hmm. So um, the singing straw is, you know, a, a tool for singers to work out their voice uh, of an actual tangible thing that we can use that's scientifically proven to help our vocal folds move in a more efficient way and to help train our muscle memory to be more effective singers. It's sort of like yoga or resistance training for your voice, right? Because all of what's happening in our vocal tract, we've got little muscles, lots of these things that are happening. It's very physical. It's mm -hmm. it's very similar, you know, it's just a much smaller, um, you know, smaller size thing than going out for a run or being some sort of athlete. You know, we have to train our body, our vocal tract all the muscles um, we don't want too much tension right but we need um, it, we need to be able to have intensity and power and control and this like the singing straw is a, a like a proven way to build your strength and agility as a singer and to also sort of keep you in line and make sure that you're you know w that your vocal folds and your voice is working in the most efficient efficient way possible mm -hmm. I magic like that. E magic exactly it's the magic. <laughs> Because it's so, I mean, uh, I guess you mentioned the word science there as well. And I guess that's what a lot of my, uh, sorry, I'm just going to fan myself because I'm roasting here. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of my students, when I, when I bring the straw and talk about straw phonation with them, um, they, because I'm also doing a lot of my, my lessons in German, 90% mm -hmm. of it. Um, is in German. So my, my explanation of it might not be as succinct as my explanation in, in English um, or, or clear, clear, but still there's this, this feeling of kind of going, okay, but what is it? What am I doing? What, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> and I kind of go, well, are you crazy? <laughs> yes, exactly. Like, and like, I have a big window here with neighbors out there and my students come in here and they're doing straw formation with their cheeks <laughs> out. And I'm going, I know, I know they think we're nuts, but they think I'm nuts as well. So it's okay. We're in this together. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so I guess let's maybe talk a small bit about Ingo Tietze and, and kind yes. of where it all happened from. Yes, absolutely. So Ingo Tietze is a scientist who pioneered a lot of the research around straw foundation, and he's actually who introduced it to me um, eight years ago, nine years. It's been a few been a minute. Um, <laughs> I was actually at a vocology and practice conference many, many years ago. And uh, I tell the story sometimes, but essentially I, this was when I was, I was teaching at the time. Um, I should actually track back in my calendar and figure out exactly the date, but I hadn't started Songbird yet. Um, and, or maybe it was right around the time that Songbird was starting. Either way, I was um, performing a lot more. So I'm these days I don't perform nearly as much, well, partially because of COVID, but also because I have a two and a four-year-old and, <laughs> you know, don't, not a ton of time to, to perform. But back then I had released my first album and I was um, touring for it and I was really excited and uh, went up the West Coast here in um, the States, you know, and, and did like a three-week tour and... Um, I got super tired and I, you know, fatigued night after night of performing. And I thought, what is going on with me? Like I warm up every day. I know a healthy technique. I know what I'm doing. Why am I tired? You know, I drink lots of water. I'm, you know, but of course I was getting the best sleep I could, but on the road, you know, it's like you're sleeping on someone's couch and, you know, you're lugging your keyboard and, you know, and then afterwards, after each show of maybe, you know, an hour and a half, I'd be talking to people and getting them to sign up for my mailing list and trying to sell them a CD. And, um, you know, so I was finding every night I would be more fatigued every night. Uh, the, the note, like my big money notes were harder to get. I wasn't getting as much, you know, vibrancy on them and mm -hmm. I had to work harder and my warm-ups were getting longer each day to get mm -hmm. to my same range and I was like this something is not working and so a few months later I was at this conference this VIP conference that um, Dr. Tietze and his daughter Karen spoke at and you know they're standing up there and talking about straw phonation I'm just like what this looks ridiculous, but <laughs> these people seem to know what they're talking about. I mean, how could I not? Like, I have to trust these people, but this is very ridiculous. <laughs> and, um, you know, but I was like, all right, I'll give it, I'll give it a try. Um, and it was a lot to get used to in the beginning. You know, we were using very thin stirring uh, coffee, like plastic stirring mm. straws. And, um, you know, I, 
it took me it took me a while to get used to the resistance to figure out how to use it to figure out like what exactly to do with it to sort of help my voice and the first thing i did was incorporate it in my warm up routine mm-hmm. and the very interesting thing is that i had another tour booked a few months later same exact gig dates you know i was sort of going back to the same cities back to the same venues i wanted to you know i was trying to build a fan base and so it was really I had this exact replica chance to test it out. So I took it the second time with me and I had my straw this time. And sure enough, it was like night and day difference. It was unbelievable. Like I, so I would use it as my warm up, and then I would also use it to cool down after every show. And I had, my voice was like shining the whole time. I had no problems. And so for me, from there on out, I was like sold. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the most, like I, that had been the most, um, impactful thing that I had done for my voice in my entire life. And I was like, what? How did this change so much? And so I wanted to get to understand more about it and why, and I wanted to learn more about it. And then I started experimenting with application and, and using it with my own students and then saw so much transformation. So to get to the science for just a little, a minute, is just sure. first to understand you want to know that this is an SOVT tool. So an SOVT is uh, an abbreviation for semi occluded vocal tract exercise. Um, And that's a category of exercises that partially blocks the airflow while we're singing. So um, semi, you know, uh, uh, occluded is just a fancy of saying partially obstructed or like kind of blocked off, right? So as we sing, air is coming through our vocal folds and we're, you know, creating vowels and shapes in our mouth and our throat. And if you do any type of SOVT, what you're doing is partially stopping the airflow. So you're making, you're minimizing how much air is actually coming out. And what ends up happening is you send back pressure back to the vocal folds, which helps to sort of align um, the vocal tract in a way that gives you more energy. And so categories, this uh, this category would include lip trill. So many people are familiar, and I did this for, I've done this for years, still do it, right? Um, different consonants like anything where you're partially blocking that air. But the reason that a narrow straw specifically is so impactful is because this diameter being so thin, you get such an intense amount of back pressure that it has such a strong effect at the vocal folds and at the vocal fold level, but it also is um, helping to lower the larynx and open up the pharynx and, you know, sort of relax a lot of the extrinsic muscles. So it's really incredible what it does. And a lot of times people just need to feel it once and then they're they're like oh i get it i feel a lightning like immediately other times it takes some time to get used to like i was actually somebody who sort of was resistant to the resistance at first and so it took me a little while month or so to really get it but um i still have to this day haven't found someone that it doesn't Mm. truly impact and change their voice it's incredible is there a way to do it that is wrong good question people always ask that i think it's so funny um Yeah. I mean, you know, um, I have seen, so the resistance that we're feeling here, right. Um, from the narrow diameter, uh, it, it can sometimes feel like in more intense than we're used to. It's not a feeling we're used to. And when it comes to singing and creating sound, so sometimes singers will, um, push back against it. Right. So they think, well, I feel this back pressure. I'm going to, I'm going to up my airflow. I'm going to put my air, more air pressure, more oomph into it, or I'm going to squeeze. I'm going to get really intense and I'm going to push more. Cause, but the problem is, is that the more that you, the more effort and energy you're pushing through the straw, guess what? The more you get back. Yeah. So essentially you're just like making it more, more impact, like more uh, resistant and more intense. And so sometimes that can feel like your head's going to explode, you know? So th- that's something I watch out for with singers, you know, early on. And it's it's sort of like I'll just ask them to use two or three straws to sort of lessen the resistance to get used to the feeling. You're already using paper straws, so you were you, you were used to some resistance. Um, of course, a larger straw isn't going to give you near as much unless you alternate it somehow or alter it somehow. But um, – but yeah, so you, you know, with students that are having trouble with that resistance at first, I'll let them use two or three, and then we'll just get used to it and sort of work our way in. I always say gently lean into the resistance. You're not trying to fight it. You want to work with it. Um, and then the other thing I always tell people to look out for too is uh, making sure that they're actually putting all the airflow through the straw. So sometimes bigger singers or a lot like heavier voice singers will blow so much energy that they'll lose air around. So 
right? They can't get all the, cause there's so much intensity coming out. So you really have to make sure that you're sealed um, and that no air is leaking out and that you're also not letting a lot of air out through the nose because you could accidentally be humming without realizing it. So those are the things I watch out for. You're really not going to hurt yourself with it though, you know, even unless you impale yourself with it. Like you really have to like try hard to do it wrong, wrong, but it definitely helps to have guidance and helps to have somebody who knows what they're doing, walk you through. Um, especially if you don't click to it right away, which just some people do, some people don't. Sure. And, um, is there, are there certain techniques as in vocal techniques, uh, like let's say if you're going through like twang, or if you want to work on some forward placement or nasality or whatever all that is, or you want to work, as you said, like of, a lowering the larynx, getting a wider sound, getting a darker sound. Would you use the straw in um, in tandem with specific vocal technique exercises? Okay. Yes, in fact, that's what I do with all right. of my students. I mean, yeah. I um, I use a straw with everybody. Um, it's, you know, it's just, and, and the more that you understand about it and the more that you use it as a teacher, the more you realize the possibilities in the ways that it can reinforce different um, elements of your voice and different energies and different shapings. Because with the straw, we're keeping our lips still, but you can still do a fair bit with the tongue and the larynx and, you know, um, but overall remembering what it does, right? So it's going to put you in the most efficient and easy coordination for whatever range you're singing in, whatever note you're singing in. Um, you know, so it's what I find really interesting is if you are a really heavy singer, it's going to help lighten you up a little. It won't change your sound. It's going to help you lighten up to become more efficient. If you're a really light or breathy singer, it's actually going to bring you to more vocal full chord like connection and give yeah. you a little bit more um, resonance and connection. So um, it's it's really great that way. Even you know even if you've got sort of like um, you're bringing down sort of your upper register and you're not engaging some of the you know, TA muscles on the bottom. Once you get low, the straw is going to kick those in and vice versa. If you're trying to pull a ton of heavy TA sound or chesty belt way too high, this is going to help remind you, oh, I need a little stretch and tilt too, you know? Mm, excellent. And, and what about finding, I mean, cause I've, I've seen lots of this, uh, talking about, um, working on the break is in that little Passaggio area where people oh, yeah. are always very scared of and very, um, that's one of the things when I use the straw at my students and if it doesn't work and they get to this little place, they really find it very, very um, disheartening and kind of going, oh, I can't do it even with the straw. I thought you said it's supposed to help. That's like, okay, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long journey, right? The holy grail of singers, I always say, is smoothing that transition, is getting to a voice where you don't feel that break or don't. And the reality of it is, is, you know, we're going to have, you know, naturally you have these uh, transition points in your voice occurring. It's, it doesn't go away for anybody. We just get more used to navigating it, um, you know, muscularly and uh, acoustically. Um, and the, the straw will help to get there. It's not a magical, it's not a magic pill that you swallow and all of a sudden you're, you know, Beyonce. It's, um, you you know, it just takes time, um, but it's 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 like thinking about a tool or like you know resistance training or something you're using at the gym for your body. It's like you don't pick up a dumbbell and then all of a sudden you're fit. You know, you have to work it, you have to use it, and so. Um, but straw foundation, singing straw specifically, can be incredibly helpful for smoothing breaks because again, it sort of helps you to find that sweet spot as you're navigating through. Um, although a lot of times people are really in their head about where they transition. They're real, and you know, especially if you have. A really dramatic break. It's like you're constantly thinking about it and you're worried and when's it going to happen? Oh, and it's happening here. And, and what a lot of singers don't understand is that break, it, it's not one it's not just one place. Like even your muscular transition, like where you're handing off like muscularly and like that primary uh, passaggio, uh, depending on the vowel you're singing, it can be half step higher, half step lower, depending on what kind of, uh, you know, vocal effects you're using, it can adjust where you are, what your larynx is doing can adjust. So there's no, it's not, it, like so focusing so much on that I always try to break that I say okay let's yeah. not think about it let's just siren through the straw let's play around get back and forth get back and forth and you know different exercises on the straw specifically that are going to take you back and forth and back and forth and then in time that will start to smooth out and pass off to your you know to your lyric singing absolutely and as you said it's a process it's not something as you said taking the pill and you're just although if there were a pill that would make you into Beyonce, 
Let's try and get that happening. Let's try and make that. <laughs> that would be amazing. But, I'll work on it. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, that's the next thing. Singing straw and then Beyonce. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I think that's very important. I think that the process, just like if you were doing resistance training in the gym or, um, or doing, you know, what I also see and what a lot of people know is the straw in water, right? Yeah. That kind of thing of kind of making it in comparison to if you were doing some exercises underwater, anything that can create more and healthier resistance, I guess, in your mm -hmm. voice is always going to be a plus. And this singing straw, I can vouch for it. I can tell, I've been telling everyone, it's been sitting on my desk since I got it. Um, and thank you for the help as well for, for allowing it happen because whatever with the, the internet, I wasn't finding a way to it, but um, all good. very happy with it. I'm just so glad you're loving it. You know, I've had people reach out and just say um, that this has changed their life. And that for me is like, I, I feel so, like that makes me so joyful. I'm just so yeah. happy to be able to help people sing and to l just feel more comfortable and confident with their voice because I think yeah. we should all have that. And what's so great about like the way, you know, that using the singing straw is it's, you don't have to think like, you know, I tell my singers all the time, you know, my students, you have to focus on your practice, right? So mm -hmm. it's about frequency. So you're, you're, it's not like you need to, you know, do like a three hour workout every day. It's like, you've got to be practicing, you know, uh, frequently, but you also can't be mindlessly practicing, right? You need to be focusing on what you're doing and, and we're reinforcing things that we're working on in lessons, or you're doing something, you know, working towards maybe extending your range or getting more power in your high notes or getting more resonance in your low notes, whatever those things are, your practice has to be focused and moving in that direction, right? You yeah. can't just sit there and tool around on a song and call it a practice. It's not. It's playing. And that's fine. You should play too. But mm. if you're wanting to see change, you need to have focused practice. What's so cr like crazy awesome about the singing straw is that this sometimes will like even, it helps you with that focus, right? Because by singing with the singing straw, your vocal tract and what's happening inside all of a sudden adjusts, right? So you may not even have to be thinking as much and you're able to get that focused practice physically speaking. And then ultimately you're trying to create muscle memory patterns and habits so that then you can keep that same healthy coordination and connection once you come off the straw. So it's a way of sort of like getting extra you know, strength and building towards that, you know, sweet spot of your voice um, without having to do as much work it makes things easier it's really great yeah and i guess this is why i think i said to you also it kind of changed the game for me because my my warm-up was always focused and you know warm-ups changes or warm-ups change uh, all the time but but once i was able to add uh something like this into the warm-up um it really was a game changer it really was kind of something that kind of went ah okay this is really how i can get to the moment that i need to get to without having to kind of search through the files in my head of what works for what. No, I have like a go-to thing, focus on it. As you said, you get instant physical focus and then you can work on towards the, the technique that you're looking at. I love it. Absolutely. I mean, in the singing, think about it, right? Like we're not, um, it's not like I can physically adjust what I need to in my students. You know, if I'm helping someone hit a baseball, I can say, okay, line up your knuckles or, you know, adjust where your bat is or move, you know, or if you're working on throwing, it's like, okay, well, raise your elbow. Um, with this, it's not the same. I could say lower your larynx, but that may not mean anything to my student, right. you know, and I can't get in there and do it for them. Mm -hmm. And so it's, you know, there's this really unique, and even if you compare it to an instrument, for example, like the guitar, it's like, okay, well, if you want vibrato, what are you going to do? You're going to move your finger. We can't, if I want a singer to have vibrato, it's a completely different story. Yeah. And so we have this, we're connected to singing in this way that's physical and mental and emotional and so having something that can adjust like this is the closest thing I have that's something that can actually physically adjust what's happening in the vocal tract and it's just amazing yes I agree I also think that it's always this comparison between like what what happened to me a couple of months ago is that I started going to the gym for the very first time in my life I'm nearly 30 nice I never used to go to the gym <laughs> and so I went started going last year and I went in the door the trainer came up to me and said okay great what kind of thing do you want to work on do you want mm -hmm. all around fitness or do you want strength training or do you want something? And I said, oh, all around fitness. And he said, okay. And then he got out the app and he said, if you do this, 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 and this, when you go to the gym, 
you will be working focused only on that. And I kind of was coming back to my singing classes, kind of going, my God, is this not exactly what we should be doing for our singers? Yes. Giving them a, a way in which that if this is what you want, this is these are the tools in which you can get there and to yes. mix, mix and match. And I kind of feel that the singing straw was kind of the, the, the missing link for me that I that I was kind of waiting because I knew straw phonation, the, the paper straws were working OK. But I think this thing really it's so the, the, the design of it is beautiful. Um, it makes it something that you like to have in the sense of it look it feels nice to have and also the 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 steel it is steel right or is it yes stainless steel stainless mm -hmm, steel right. so mm -hmm. um and just the the as you said the diameter of it it's all it's all so detailed and so well thought out um and so thank you oh thank you i really appreciate that yeah i mean it's i i created it because I knew I needed one myself. I couldn't keep using those plastic straws. It was just uh, too bad for the environment. And I have them all over my studio and in the bottom of my purse and I couldn't yeah. clean them. And it's just, so I selfishly did it for myself, but I'm really, really happy that I can share it with the world it's now. It's worked out. It's worked out. Big time. And, I and love so, it. And so come here with when, so actually, when did you, when did you create the singing straw? I know I have So it has, we launched last summer. Um, so, uh, but you know, it had been in the works for up to a year prior, prior to that, that I was, you know, figuring out how we were going to like what material we were going to use and how we were going to create it. I wanted something that was convenient and easy and customizable and not too confusing. Yeah. You know, I think some people are like, well, can I have multiple sizes and can I, and I'm just like, I really wanted to make this simple. Yeah. And what's really great about our set is that we've got three straws. They're the same size. So you, they're convenient. If you lose one, you still have like, it's, you can have one that for the rest of your life and but if you're getting into it or if you have a bigger voice or if you're sick and you need less resistance you can use two or you can use three and so um i wanted to do something that was convenient easy you know and then also somewhat customizable so we've got some exciting things in the works too so i'm excited um to just i'm just i'm really i'm really passionate about sharing this with more singers and i nice. i've seen firsthand and know firsthand the impact it can have on our voices and i just nice. i'm thrilled and so did you start the YouTube series and YouTube account for The Singing Straw? I did. Yes, definitely. So um, I'm in the YouTube world. <laughs> we just, it was actually a COVID project. It happened in the midst of the quarantine, you know, it had been on my uh, to-do list of thinking, well, I want to do something that helps to, helps to move people along. Because the funny thing is, is like I said, I created the singing straw really, truly for me and Songbird. I was like, I want to do something because we've got our students and they can't be using plastic straws. <laughs> so um you know, but then quickly, um, friends of mine and colleagues were really excited about it. And so I was thrilled to see other people getting as nerdy as I was about straw phonation. <laughs> I mean, I really didn't think people were getting this excited because I'm, I was this excited, but I just didn't know there were enough nerds out there. You know There's what I mean? I just love it. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> and I love meeting them. I just love, yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, let's see. I was, um, where was I going? I was, yeah, I was, we, um, gosh, gosh, gosh. Oh, I lost my train of thought. I'm just oh, so good. excited about voice nerds. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but I was, I think I was just going to say that, um, you know, as we sort of expanded and realized that there were more people that would be excited about it, I thought, well, how can we get it into people's hands and, yeah. and what can we do to sort of spread the word? And so, um, you know, as we started, you know, a lot of the teachers and my friends who were, um, you know, who were taking, who were getting the singing strong were excited. My teachers knew what to do. My, my colleagues knew what to do. But then they started telling their students and their students would be excited and they would start using it and then their friends, but then they'd start messaging on Instagram being like, okay, but now what? Okay, but so like I added to my, I could do, I do a slide and then what do I do? Like, how do I, but you said this works and it helps with vibrato. So how does that work with vibrato? And so I, I was like, I've got to find a venue, a way to, you know, to share actual exercise sets, like what I do with the straw so people can understand how to apply it in this way, how to apply it in that way, what kind of, like, what is the ideal warm up? Um, and that was how the YouTube channel was born of, I wanted to just create, um, sets that people could do quickly. You know, you don't have to hear me talk too much. You know, it's really a lot of singing and, um, it's meant to be, you know, a, a workout routine that people can do and, um, that gets results. Yeah. And what's great is that I think 
if anyone has a product or if anyone says that it ha it can affect you in a good way, to demo it is the next step. And I think that's really when when I started, when I was watching the videos, I was watching you demo it all the time. I was kind of going, ah, okay, it really makes a lot of sense because I can kind of see it. And then I tried it myself. So I think that's that the YouTube series is really great. It's really great. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And also they look great. The videos themselves look great and stuff. But I think you're also right. I think that having these kind of, you know, to the point workout videos that people can watch for, for three, five, seven minutes, whichever. That's just kind of, that's what we need as singers, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. what my students need. Even though I see them on a regular basis, I'm seeing them every week or every other week, they still want to work out with something. You know, it's nice to have. And I think about how I keep myself in shape and how I, yeah. what I do for myself. Like I, I use guided meditations. I use guided workouts. I mean, right. uh, the same thing goes for singing. We kind of, it's really useful to have that. So I'm, I hope that it, I hope it helps people. And I hope that, yeah. um, you know, I, I have, I know that it already, like people are seeing change and that's really what I'm looking for. I'm just like super happy to, help people mm. i think the variety of your videos is also great you know oh you... thanks yeah but i think that it was really interesting for me because i think it was it seemed kind of coincidental and i really loved it because i think i had contacted you and and then the next day or the day after was a guy a, 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 a workout for lower voices i was mm -hmm. like Oh, ah. like, yes, thank you. Beautiful. And then I did it and I was like, I just, it's nice to know that, you know, um, that you're kind of catering for everyone, which is, you know, the best thing. Awesome. I'm so glad you're liking it. Yeah, I'm definitely, and I'm always looking for ideas too. I'm, you know, I'm very active on our Instagram and on our yeah. YouTube. Like I, right now we're small enough that I, I can talk to everybody and I can message you and I, you know, I can actually answer questions. I've been doing Instagram lives and stuff. I really want to know what you guys, like what singers are wanting and I'm going to do my best to answer questions where I can or bring people who in who can and use tools that work, you know? Yeah. And so maybe that can bring me on to my last question of asking you, do you have any uh, books, resources, uh, websites, um, Spotify playlists, whatever that could, that you would recommend for singers or for, for in trainer teachers like myself? Well, yes, absolutely. There's a few, um, you know, resources that I, that have been really impactful and helpful for me. One would be, um, Vocology and Practice, which is a teacher organization I'm a, I'm a part of. Um, I have been chairperson actually, uh, for the past few years and I just passed off and it's, uh, organizations very near and dear to my heart. It's a nonprofit and some of my life, like most closest and, um, friends that I know that I'll have forever are I've met through there. Um, some people who've really inspired me and people who've really challenged me to grow. Um, I feel very grateful for that community. So, um, and it is, it's a small group, um, but teachers all around the world and, um, it's, it's very high level, um, and intimidating. I remember being very nervous when I started just thinking, Oh gosh, do I belong here? And am I going to be able to keep up? Um, but it's, it's, uh, taught me so much and brought me to so many inspiring things. So Vocology and Practice, so definitely check that out. It's a nonprofit network for teachers. Um, and then, oh gosh, um, I really like the website voicesciencework.org. They actually have tons of stuff on straw foundation. Dave and Laurel are really wonderful and they do a lot of choral singing and um, they also just distill science in a way that's digestible and understandable. Um, and I really like that. I'm also a huge fan of the Naked Vocalist podcast. Um, Steve and Chris are part of uh, VIP and um, they've got some great podcasts there. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a there's a ton of stuff out there, but those would be maybe my favorites getting off. Yeah, and all of those, what's great about all of those that they're so, they're... Um... Uh, reachable. I mean, they're all over the place. There's Spotify, they're on Instagram, there's the Voice Science Works website is so beautifully laid out and with, with images and pictures. I think anyone I that goes it. on that might be intimidated, even though there's a lot of words there that you might not know, they, as you said, they distill it in a way that can be, can be understood. Um, yes. Which is yeah, really they've got some great diagrams. I love yes. it. <laughs> yeah, big time. Yeah. And as you said, VIP, I mean, I have to mention, I took, uh, I was a part of the VIP conference this year, the uh, virtual, uh, virtual voice conference. Yes. Wasn't that fabulous? Oh, it was so much fun. That was, that was a, wow. 
that was like a that was a that was a trip you know it was like <laughs> i don't know else way to say it i mean that was that was some of the most interesting information i've i've listened to um in i don't know a long long time i think i'm not sure if maybe ever it's that kind of information that a lot of you could see there was 118 19 of us maybe at most um or maybe 120 or so i'm not sure of the numbers but uh, you could see all of us were there hungry for this information. Yeah. And the way it was done, the people you had on, you know, all of the incredible, Justin Stoney, I mean, Sundberg, all of those guys. I mean, it was really, it was fantastic. I would also recommend it to anyone. Yeah. Uh, that's another great resource, Justin's YouTube channel, um, <laughs> the New York Vocal Coaching YouTube channel. And they have a podcast as well that's Thank super you. resourceful. They are fantastic. Um, are. Yeah. And I, I, VI, I, I can't take any credit for that amazing event. Gemma and Kaya put that on for VIP. It was unbelievable it like was. and I was just thrilled because you know we had all these high hopes of doing these in-person events you know like we'd done in the past and so we yeah. had one planned for Norway and one planned for Georgia and uh COVID changed all of those plans but mm. there was you know thank goodness that Gemma and Kai were able to come in and sort of really recreate that mag- magic in a virtual way that mm. I felt after that weekend like I had been in the room with you guys you know I was so I felt so energized and connected I was thrilled like it was yeah it was pretty awesome yeah because it, it's a strange it's a strange kind of feat to, to still get that community feel just on an online um, platform because yeah. I'm sure the in-person stuff that you've had in the past have has been full of networking and full of chatting you know uh, in groups in one-to-one in big lecture yes. halls or whatever so and sure lunches and dinners after right. you know what I mean in the coffee on the way to the conference hall exactly right. and I was worried about that I thought well how are they gonna but we there was a really energetic chat going the whole time you know and we had a bunch of breakouts and socials and so mm-hmm. um and a lot of chat in between sessions while people were jamming to some music yeah. it was really 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 nice I had a, I had an interview um uh recently with a woman called Kathleen Turner who uh who's the the coordinator of the community music in the Irish World Academy of Music and Dance ah. and she talked about this idea of she has had students that are now online that are more vocal than they would have been in class or in ah. choirs because they might not be the type of person that was such an extrovert but because there was an online forum they were able to type they didn't have 50 heads yes. to look at them and so then people are more vocal. And I kind of felt that maybe was the, the fact in VIP is that a lot of people were just boom, 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 typing, typing, typing that might not have had the chance to in a, in a lecture. That is so interesting. Yeah, it's absolutely, it it's goes back to sort of like finding the, you know, creative opportunities in these adverse, ad, you know, in adversity. It's like, yeah. it's going to bring different pros and cons and exactly. and in it other opportunities for people to to shine or to you know maybe come out of their shell in a way that they wouldn't be able to in another form so that's awesome yeah, yeah. i completely agree yeah well whitney that's all of my questions <laughs> all right well this was so much fun connor i love what you're doing i love just having conversations about voice and singing and i just yeah. think it's so um i just think what you're doing is so awesome so congrats and kudos and keep doing it Thank you. Thank you very much. I will. I will. I'm going to keep going. There's no stopping me now. I'm moving to Vienna next month, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be still doing it. Awesome. Well, thanks, Connor. And good luck on your move. Thank you very much. Yeah. We'll talk soon. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Stay in touch. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye now. See you.